The remarkable thing in dreams, people say what he never hears in waking. Fat. They say to his face, not behind his back or clear of your shot. The word is succulent in their mouths. Fat. <laughs> Stretching out like the waist on his Santa belt pants. Nothing derogatory about it, only an unabashed honesty. Uh, and on these mornings, for a few moments, he wakes feeling curiously relieved. Clarence John Suftich, pinky to his friends, at five foot eight and 482 pounds on a good day, is fat. <laughs> not large, big, or big boned, not hefty, husky, generous, or oversized. He is fat, <laughs> enormous, corpulent. <laughs> and no delicate euphemisms or polite evasions can relieve him of this knowledge. When every movement, whether tying a shoe or climbing a flight of stairs, becomes a labor of the heart. Not that he has much to do with people in general. He lives in Clarkston, Washington, a scrappy town of 20 odd thousand on the eastern edge of the state, where the paltry rainfall encourages prickly pear and lawns, and 12% of the population is on welfare. He works as night janitor at Loyola High School. And when most town's folks are gathered in families for dinner, Pinky's company is the clatter of a scrub bucket, mop, and brush. But for solace, he has his voice, a fine, clear tenor to fill the empty rooms. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a mare. <laughs> Not that he knows much about that. Amore, that is. For he is virginal, a moderate embarrassment at his age, having come to terms, he believes, with the reality that no one loves a fat man. And so he has given up on love, the daydreams, the hope, the mooning about, the unsightly chase, the precipitous rejections, until this Monday. That is, on, this, on one of his twice weekly food shopping trips, when he sees her in the produce aisle of the North Side A and B market, a uh, Ruta Vega under her nose, a peckish look about her mouth. She's little, <laughs> a narrow, neatly plain body. There is about her a s solidarity, the starkness of a lightning rod. He finds this fascinating. More than that, it stirs him in a way he's never imagined. His feet locked like a stammer, his breast tightening, unlike the usual angina. <laughs> what is it about this woman? Her shoulders pinned at attention, the fierce way she sniffs out the proper rutabaga, that he feels so intimidated, dwarfed, really. For although Pinky knows himself to be large, Talcum's each pant leg to keep his thighs from chafing, avoids chairs with arms. He's always believed himself to be small. Just a tiny voice chirping on the horizon, a flotsam in an ocean of flesh. The real him adrift like a buoy on high tide. But standing in the grocery aisle, he knows for the first time in his 40 odd years, what it means to be struck by your love. Well, she passes on the rutabagas, and even as she's whisking out a produce, he's slipping the vegetable underneath his nose. Then as in his card, as perhaps as a keepsake, it does, he's never actually eaten one and doesn't know what to do with a thing that is down, rolling down the cart's length, toppling stacked frozen dinners, breaded fresh sticks, uh, hungry man slabs of Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes, and gravy, oh, 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 and the comfort foods. <laughs> Donut holes, baker's dozen, hostess ho-hos, and chocolate cheesecake as a chaser. <laughs> Front wheel turns sideways, thumps, ba-bump, 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 calling everyone's attention, he thinks, as he trails her to the checkout lane before he's actually ready. 
He tries not to stare, but admires the efficiencies of her moves. She retrieves each item with a lean elegance, and he hangs on the cart handle, dizzy with love. Half hope she notices the rutabaga. But when she leaves the store, she's burdened by six plastic sacks hanging plumb from her fist. She staggers out, pauses in the sunlight, the door frozen open at her back so that the heat wafts in, and he imagines her body, that small, dark column, immune to the glare of the sun on concrete, her clothes dry, her armpits forever fresh. <laughs> well, by the time he's checked out, she's gone. And as he pulls out on the street, he sees her struggling down the block. He closes his teeth against the knocking of his heart, idles behind her, the wide-body Chevy wallowing like a, a whale in the shallows as he leans across the seat, rolls down the window. Uh, uh, can I give you a lift? She angles a suspicious look at him. Uh, just a ride. I, I, I'm, I'm safe. He, he says as he has to steer clear of a parked car. <laughs> she glances over her shoulder. Do I look like I need help? <laughs> well, of course she doesn't need help. Certainly not from him. And he ducks his head in apology and cheeks flushing with that old familiar heat. What is left of him is this small dignity. He touches a finger to his forehead as if to tip a cap and accelerates down the street as though his heart were still intact. 